Here we're going to look at sales revenue on the income statement in detail. But before we get into that, we still have to make a distinction here on how we charge our inventory against that sale. So here we make a sale on account, accounts receivable. We increase that by, say, $1,000. And then we would credit or increase sales revenue by $1,000. And we, in the first way that we account for inventory would be reducing inventory, say at $600 here, which is an asset on the balance sheet. And then the related charge would go directly here to cost of goods sold, which is an expense on the income statement. Okay. The second way we'd account for inventory against the sales we made for that period would be to accumulate the purchase inventory for those sales here. And an, uh, an, an inventory account that's directly on the income statement and then at the end of the period we'd close that account and we'd move it up here into cost of goods sold which would be the expense on uh, the income statement for those sales. So here we're accumulating the inventory directly into the net onto the net income or the income statement and of course the sales would be made the, sim the same way on account here. We increase our accounts receivable by a thousand dollars and uh, increase our sales revenue by a thousand dollars and then of course the cost of goods sold for those purchased inventories for the period would in this case be six hundred dollars and that would be a, the expense for those sales revenue okay the first situation we're going to look at for a sales here is where we get inventory which is an asset on the balance sheet and for that sale, we're going to charge that inventory to a cost of goods sold, which is an expense here on the income statement. So let's go up and look here. We make a sale for uh, $10,000, and we do it on account. So we increase our accounts receivable by $10,000, and then go credit our sales revenue, or increase our sales revenue by $10,000. Uh, say next we had a, a sales return and allowance. So we would the gross amount of the value of that return here would decrease accounts receivable, say it was $300, and then we would go and increase our sales return and allowance here for $300. So this reduces sales, contra account reduces sales. And we can't forget here that on the sales return allowance we had an inventory amount return. So we're going to credit or debit inventory, increase our inventory account here by the percentage that the inventory was used against that sale, say it was $200, and then we have to make the associated cost of goods, reduced cost of goods sold for that sale for $200 as well. Now let's go to say, a look at the sales discount. Say the person was going to pay $1,000 against his account, so we would reduce accounts receivable for $1,000 and then they took the sales discount, I'll say it was 2%. So here we would debit or increase sales discounts for $20. $20. Remember that is also a contra revenue account that reduces sales. And then the associated uh, uh, debit entry would be to increase cash here for $980. And uh, that's all we received on that thousand dollars that were due us because we had a sales discount of two percent. Okay, one last item here would be our transportation cost. Say we had a transportation in cost of two hundred dollars, so we'd reduce cash by two hundred dollars, and then we'd debit or increase our inventory account for two hundred dollars. Say we had a transportation out charge, so we'd reduce cash by four hundred dollars, and then we'd go down and uh, increase our expense here to cost the goods sold by four hundred dollars. Okay, the second method that we used here for accounting for sales is where we accumulated our purchases of inventory for those sales directly to the income statement for the period. And then those um, that purchased inventory would be transferred into cost of goods sold, which is the expense for those sales. So let's look here at a sales return and allowance. A customer returns $300 worth of inventory that he purchased. So we'll take the gross amount and reduce accounts receivable by the $300 and then we go up here and debit or increase return sales returns and allowances which is a contra revenue account and reduces the sales for that that amount. Then let's look here at a uh, sales discount. Say the customer is going to pay a thousand dollars on the account but 
uh, we re reduce accounts receivable by a thousand dollars and then uh, takes a sales discount we offer them a sales discount so say it was two percent so here we would increase sales discount uh, by twenty dollars which would also reduce the sales so the um, balancing entry would be to cash here so we would increase cash by nine hundred eighty dollars the thousand dollars minus the twenty dollar discount would be nine hundred eighty dollars so all we received here on the thousand dollars that we're going to uh, receive was nine hundred eighty dollars because of the uh, sales discount and lastly let's just look here at say we had a transportation out charge on those sales so we would cr uh, credit or reduce cash by say four hundred dollars and then we would go and debit or increase transportation out by four hundred dollars now that's just another expense account here against the sales so in summary here we've looked at um, the sales revenue and then we saw looked at sales return and allowances which reduces sales as a contra revenue account and then also sales discount which is a contra revenue or reduces sales and then say we had another expense here on transportation out and then we looked at uh, cost of goods sold how we either took uh, re took our inventory as an asset off the balance sheet or we had direct directly recorded our purchases for those sales here uh, directly on the income statement and then we char um, charge cost of goods sold for that uh, for the inventory amount against those sales so that's just a summary view of uh, the sales uh, revenue account and the other accounts that interact with it